Welcome back to Words of Paradise. I'm your host, Leon Idol, and if, if you guys are living under a rock, if you are if you are nerds who somehow live deep and dark in the catacombs and caves, you know, we could call them, you know, dungeons, then maybe you haven't heard about the controversy going on with Dungeons and Dragons. But I'm sure most of you have heard a lot of the mechanics and creatures that were once, you know, free for all non D and D tabletop board games to use. Uh, are now being consolidated into being owned by Wizards of the Coast, and if you are going to use them, you either have to pay an absorbent amount of money, or you can't use them uh, because D and D has ownership. Basically, they're they're getting rid of any sense of community. I, I kind of explained it poorly because, uh, frankly, e even I don't quite grasp the specifics of it. It, I I, I understand as much that it is a large money ploy, and that Wizards is doing everything they can to make sure that. Uh, no other tabletop game like Dungeons and Dragons exists, at least not without their saying so and getting lots of money for it. And it's kind of an, an awful situation all in all. Not one that I've been following super closely because, well, I haven't given the, uh, Wizards of the Coast money for Dungeons and Dragons in a long time. I have saw this coming years ago and stopped doing business with Wizards of the Coast D&D related wise due to scummy business practices and how they were treating D&D, and, you know, the same with Magic the Gathering. However, it seems like there's now a lawsuit happening over this, at least I assume over this, so Hasbro threatened with class action lawsuit via petition for Dungeons & Dragons change. Let's go through here and see what this has to say. With all the craziness happening in the world of Dungeons & Dragons right now, we only have one thing to say to the folks at Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast. Well, 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 how the turntables... Alright, yeah, I mean, I get it. You're trying to be funny. Not not very not, not very clever, but I at least appreciate you going at Wizards and making fun of them. So, you got my thumbs up. Fair, fair enough, we got this covered. The offense references aside, if you didn't know, allow us to provide you a brief update. A new gaming license from D&D parent company Wizards of the Coast and subsequent owner Hasbro has generated a slew of restrictions regarding original content and the ability adjacent creators have to turn a profit on the property. In the past, Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro, and the people that enjoy their games have all played relatively nice, pun intended. Now, though, it seems there's been a massive overreach in what was once standard procedure, where third-party creators used to generate wholly original content that stood to make a profit. Now their material can be demonetized and flat due to antitrust violations. Boo! What the hell, Hasbro? To go after your fandom like that doesn't seem very fair. You know, I'm pretty sure Star Wars fans only have this to say. First time. <laughs> Although the motivation behind why a 20 year standard was suddenly overturned remained unclear, I will give you one word. Two syllables. What has become incredibly transparent is the overwhelming fan backlash surrounding the decision. Yeah, seriously, you, you already had your fans turn against you with Magic the Gathering, and now you have them turning against you with D&D &D as well. I mean, I'm sure there's some overlap for the majority of people. I'm an overlapper. I play both. used to play both religiously. Now I just kind of play Magic here and there and D&D. &D. It's been a while. But there's absolutely some overlap between these fans and... Yeah, you, you, even the fans that don't have overlap, now you're burning those bridges as well. You just, you can't leave well enough alone because you're so money hungry and greedy. Isn't that right, Papa Hasbro? It, it's honestly disgusting to see. And it makes me just so increasingly happy that all my books, because I, I don't play this 5th edition crap. I play 3-5, like a true DM, like a true Dungeons & Dragons player. I know the game peaked at 3.5, and we don't play anything else. Now, because I play 3.5, you can get those PDFs online for free. So, you know what? Never had to give Wizards a dime for that. Beyond that, man, I homebrew every story because you don't need to run no modules when you're a good storyteller. So, frankly, I'm a-okay with not giving Wizards money for d and I haven't for years, and it just bleeds over into magic as well at this point. In an online petition, a class action lawsuit looks to be leveled against both Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast in an effort to maintain creative rights. Who's to say if a legal move like this has the ability to take down two of the largest names in the gaming industry, but if anyone can do it, it's D&D fans. After all, all these fighting dragons in their free time, they can handle a few fi fire-breathing bigwigs. Well, roll for initiative and get yourself a good lawyer slash DM because if you do go through with this, it is going to be a hell of a battle. Now, it's one that I would like to see the fans win because, frankly, they're the ones that keep companies like this in business. But also, if the fans lose and 
Hasbro loses enough, uh, you know, money and financial resources, and they go out of business. Frankly, this could be a win-win for someone on the outside like me. Either way, I've talked ad nauseum in other videos about how I want to see Wizards of the Coast burn, mostly for what they've done to Magic: The Gathering, since you know D and D doesn't really apply to me since I homebrew everything anyway. But honestly, in D and D as well, because just because it's not something that I uh, care about as much or play as often anymore as I used to, I don't like seeing uh, other people with fandoms crapped on and trampled upon and just all together you know failing their constitution checks just because a company is being greedy money hungry and disrespectful towards the people that made them what they are now all in all that was a pretty short article not a lot to cover just basically saying hey you know we're 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 fans we're suing Wizards of the coast and hasbro and here's a little tidbit of information uh but it, it does kind of segue into an additional article a couple days old but i think they tie together nicely and i want to go over this one as well Former Wizards of the Coast Vice President doesn't think Dungeons and Dragons can revoke the old OGL, which is, you know, open game license. And that, that, that's good. I mean, obviously he's not the Vice President anymore, so it doesn't matter. But I do want to hear his perspective and what he has to say about it, because it does, just from the title alone, seem more in line with the fans and, and what cre you know, creatives and players and, you know, the people who actually spend the money on the product want. Uh, so let's go through here. Former Wizards of the Coast Vice President Ryan Dunnessy shares his opinion on Dungeons & Dragons' recently leaked open game license policy. The former Vice President of Wizards of the Coast recently shared his thoughts on Dungeons & Dragons' controversial changes to the open game license. Though his co comment is not official or legally binding, he believes Hasbro won't be able to enforce the draconian changes in the Dra Dungeons & Dragons' new open game license. Ryan Dancy is the former Vice President in charge of Dungeons & Dragons for Wizards of the Coast. He was the man responsible for creating the original open game license, the legal documents and guidelines that give third-party publishers the right to create homebrew D&D content without being sued for third edition Dungeons & Dragons. Which, again, I don't know if... I, I assume the OGL was consistent. I mean, it may have started at D&D 3, you know, third edition, but, you know, carried on through all the other editions. Like I said, I'm a 3-5 player, and I homebrewed everything, so... Recently, rumors that Wizards of the Coast was trying to crack down on homebrew were all but confirmed when a new 1D&D OGL document leaked online, dubbed the OGL 1.1. This document magnifies the oversight Wizards of the Coast would have on third-party Dungeons & Dragons content and gives it full creative rights to anything published with the new system. Additionally, the new OGL claims it overrides and revokes the previous OGL, a feat that is widely believed to be impossible, even according to an old Wizards of the Coast frequently asked questions page. Alright, the question, can't Wizards of the Coast change the license in a way that I wouldn't like? Answer, yes it could, however the license already defines what will happen to content that has been previously distributed by, uh, using an earlier version. In section 9, as a result, even if Wizards made changes you disagree with, you could continue to use an earlier acceptable version at your option. In other words, there is no reason for Wizards to ever make a change to the community of people using the open gaming license would object to, because the community would just ignore the change anyway. I mean, it doesn't sound like, it, it sounds like they absolutely can, and that people are just going to say, okay, do it anyway, we're, we're just going to do what we want, which is pretty much what it seems like is already happening, so I guess this is fair, I mean, this is from January 28th, uh, or 26th, sorry, 2004, well, here we are, almost 20 years later, and it's finally happening, what a... What a visionary this question, uh, the, the, the man or woman asking this question was. It was D&D in 2004, let's face it, it's probably a man. As the original creator of the OGL, Dancy has now weighed in on the situation. His belief that the creativity of the Dungeons and Dragons community was his true strength led them to champion the original OGL, and he believes OGL 1.1 is in direct opposition to the spirit of the document. My mans, talk about a based take. Dancy, the entire community owes you a steak dinner. Fight for them fan rights. We, we do not see vice presidents or people in positions of power, and I get it, he's not anymore, but even so, often stick up for fans and fan outcry. What an OG. Or an OGL. Yeah, my public opinion is that Hasbro does not have the power to deauthorize a version of the OGL. If it had been a power that we wanted to reserve for Hasbro, we would have enumerated in that license. I'm on record in numerous places in email and blogs and interviews saying that the license could never be revoked. Based.
Unfortunately, the spirit of that document may not be enough to protect the original OGL. In the 20 years since its creation, legal dictation has changed the way we allow Hasbro to revoke the old L OGL, even if Dungeons & Dragons fans would be upset. According to several lawyers who have weighed in on the situation, if a document does not specifically say it's irrevocable, it can be revoked. While the old OGL uses the term perpetual, it does not use the word irrevocable in writing, and Dancy's use of the word in interviews and emails may not be sufficient for the courts. Well, even so, I, I think that the lawsuit should continue. I hope that this does not, you know, deter those who were wanting to file this lawsuit. And frankly, even if the lawsuit turns up nothing, I think we can all safely agree, screw Wizards of the Coast, we're going to do what we want anyway. And if not for profit, then guess what? We're just going to create our own games. Dungeons and Dragons started off as just being its own homebrewed, created game that, frankly, sold terribly. Gary Gygax had to just... Sweat, sweat, blood, and tears to roll high enough, uh, you know, charisma checks to get this game sold, and it eventually paid off. Who's to say more can't come? So, especially with all the the frankly woke ideological trash that D and D's been doing anyway, I say let it burn. Let the entire Forgotten Realms be set ablaze, and us look away as if nothing is happening. There is still hope for the future of third-party Dungeons & Dragons content, however. The OGL 1.1 has not officially released, so Witches of the Coast still has time to change, alter, or eliminate it. Likewise, if the new OGL ends up going to court, the spirit of the original OGL could save the day, even in the absence of modern legal dic diction. Either way, if Witches of the Coast doesn't keep Dungeons & Dragons open, players are not going to be happy. Nope, they're not. Players already aren't happy. Uh, players have not been happy with Wizards of the Coast or lots of D&D &D for quite some time, and I'm, I'm A-OK -okay with this. I think it is going to be their undoing. Frankly, I wonder if this is going to affect... They have a movie coming out in like two months, three months. How, this might even affect your film sales. You are willing to roll this out and, and slap your face in the slap your fans in the face right before your first big theatrical film of the last 20 or 30 years? That just seems like an irresponsible move. But what do I know? I'm just some idiot in this computer who, you know, talks to a webcam. I'm not a big, smart Hollywood guy like people at D&D. &D. Hasbro. Oh, my goodness. I just, you would, th you would think that I, I have a rudimentary understanding of business. You will create product. People like product and want buy product. People do buy product. You make money, rinse, repeat. But so far, they are failing at step one in that they are not making a product that people want to buy. Therefore, people are not buying product because they're not happy with product. Now they're getting mad why people no want product. Because you're giving us crap, Hasbro. You're giving us crap. I don't know what to tell you. So, yeah, I, I don't want to see the movie fail if it's going to be a good movie. But I want to see Wizards of the Coast and D&D &D fail, so if taking a movie is what it has to take to, to put them on track, then hey, maybe that's what we gotta do. Maybe we just gotta mass boycott the film. And, uh, yeah, of course, hopefully this lawsuit goes the way we all want it to go. But that's my thoughts on this whole situation. It was kind of a lot to cover, so let me know what you think uh, in the comments below. Or you can let me know on Twitter, at BoltTheWord. And please do like and subscribe. The subscription would mean the world to me. I'm really trying to grow this channel. But uh, until next time, this has been Words of Paradise.